The clerk of the Privy Council office and her deputy have both said there was absolutely no foreign meddling in Canadian elections. But Americans sending supportive message to Canadian truckers during the Freedom Convoy was the real foreign influence. Today I'll show you those documents. I continue to go through the many, many thousands of documents from the Public Order Emergency Commission. And a lot of the things I'm looking at now are being seen in an absolutely brand new light for me, especially given what we now know about the Liberals and a very real, credible allegation of foreign influence in Canadian elections on the Liberal Party of Canada and in our democracy. As you know, at least 11 ridings here in Canada, according to the Canada Security Intelligence Agency, were targets of Chinese foreign meddling. Ethnic Chinese Canadians Alice Wong and Kenny Chu lost their seats in British Columbia because of it. And Han Dong, the Liberal MP for Don Valley East, was the beneficiary of Chinese meddling. In fact, according to a CSIS whistleblower, the meddling from the CCP was so deep and so pernicious that CSIS advised the Liberal Party top brass to not accept Dong's nomination, but Justin Trudeau himself intervened and greenlit the nomination anyway. You can see all of our coverage on that foreign meddling scandal in our elections and get involved at firedong.com. Now, during the Public Order Emergency Commission, which was the official examination of the government's heavy-handed use of a never-before-used counterterrorism law on peaceful anti-mandate protesters known as the Freedom Convoy, who had an extended three-week-long street party in the nation's capital, while Justin Trudeau and his enablers claimed the peaceful demonstration amounted to a national security threat requiring extraordinary tools and the suspension of civil liberties to deal with. I'm going through the documents from the commission to see how the people around Justin Trudeau were cultivating a narrative of foreign influence on the convoy. Because as we know, there was no foreign influence, not from Russia, not from anywhere else, despite what crazy people on the state broadcaster, the CBC, would have you believe. I do ask that because, uh, you know, given Canada's support of Ukraine in this current crisis with Russia, it, I don't know if it's far-fetched to ask, but, but there is concern that Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things uh, as, this, as this protest grows, but perhaps even instigating it from, from the outset. Well, again, I'm going to defer to uh, our uh, partners in the public safety, the uh, trained of, uh, officials and experts in that area. In fact, the only foreign influence these people could find was Americans cheering for the truckers. So moral support for people fighting for human rights here in Canada, that's foreign meddling, according to the Liberals. That sounds like China wrote it about people supporting Hong Kong. Anyway, back to Justin Trudeau's bureaucrats in the Privy Council office. Those are Justin Trudeau's chief worker bees all around him. And today I'm looking at a summary of an interview by commission lawyers of Janice Charette, the clerk of the Privy Council, and her deputy, Natalie Druin. We know right now, at least according to that highly credible CSIS whistleblower who is risking his career to l rip the lid off this scandal, that everybody around Justin Trudeau knew about Han Dong and the Chinese influence on him. But according to testimony given by Janice Shret, elections were fine, safe from foreign meddling. But the Privy Council bureaucrats, they just didn't like all those supportive messages on social media lifting the spirits of those truckers and those protesters. Look at this. It's from page 12 of her interview summary. Ms. Charette recalled that social media played a significant role in mobilizing protesters. Misinformation and disinformation were feeding the phenomenon and being amplified, not just on the domestic side, but also internationally, including by high-profile U.S. politicians. Ms. Charette asked the NSIA and her staff to develop informal tools for social media monitoring, they were spying on people sending supportive messages to the truckers. It goes on. Ms. Surrett noted that the Privy Council office previously recognized the need to address this issue during the 2021 federal election, during which the prime minister and candidates from all parties received a heightened amount of violent threats, including online. Ms. Druin remarked that although Canada is well-equipped to respond to online foreign interference in the electoral context, this is not the case for monitoring of domestic media. She noted this was an especially difficult area for policy and regulation. Yeah, what with all that pesky free speech and everything. Are these people clueless or are they part of this cover-up? 
And so what is the solution to organic support of an organic human rights movement, the Freedom Convoy? Well, it was censorship, of course. The panel identified two areas that, in their view, could be considered for legislative reform. And the first is policing jurisdiction over the parliamentary precinct and the national capital region generally, as well as jurisdiction at ports of entry. The second is the adequacy of social media monitoring and the regulation of misinformation, disinformation, and online violent rhetoric, as well as strengthening Canada's toolkit around foreign influence, I guess except insofar as it gets Liberal Party operatives elected in at least 11 ridings across the country. And these people don't want to tell me they've been contaminated by Chinese money when they react exactly how the Chinese government would react to their strongest critics that they faced since 2015 with lies and censorship. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. To see and support our ongoing coverage of the Chinese foreign influence scandal on the Liberal Party of Canada, please go to firedong.com.